So recently at Tech Yes City, we've been doing Windows 10 versus Windows 11 benchmarks with Ryzen CPUs, Intel CPUs, and we've done this over a couple of videos. I'll put the links to those videos up here because there are some important differences between these OSs on default installs. However, you guys requested in the comments that I take a look at Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, especially the Ryzen 5000 5800X 3D or 5700X 3D. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be testing out the 5700X 3D with Windows 10 versus Windows 11 in six different games and also show you guys the side-by-side -side comparisons up on the screen so you can see these differences in real time. Now, the differences won't be as pronounced as say the 7800X3D, which is a more high performance chip, but of course it costs a lot more money, especially when we factor in things like the motherboard and the DDR5 memory. And so if something like the 5700X3D or the 5800X3D still makes a lot of sense on a budget. In fact, some of these numbers are actually still mind blowing to the point where I'm like, wow, perhaps we need to look at the 5700X3D as one of the best value CPUs out there for anyone looking to get into PC gaming and not just on a budget, but also looking for some pretty good performance too. However, what we're seeing here is we'll go through the numbers one by one right after today's video sponsor. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and we've got the test system here, X570 ASRock Creator motherboard. We've got a 420 uh, mil liquid cooler on both the Ryzen CPUs that we're testing here today, as well as using 3666 on 1833 fabric on this particular manual setting with also the memory being cell 18. So it's not the best DDR4 memory and it's not the best tune, but it is a sweet spot tune across Ryzen 5000, Ryzen 3000 that I just, I've found good results with pretty much all day, every day on a lot of CPUs. Anyhow, looking at the first game here, Cyberpunk 2077. In previous benchmarks, we saw huge differences between Windows 10 and Windows 11, especially on the Ryzen 9000 series chips. But here's where there wasn't that big of a difference on the X3D. We got 209 average FPS versus 202. But regardless, there still is a boost to be had with sticking on Windows 10 versus Windows 11. Now, if we go across to the Ryzen 3600, the Ryzen 5 here, I did also decide to test this CPU just to throw in some extra results just in case someone was like, okay, what about my 3600 or say my Ryzen 7 3700X? And here's where we saw 121 versus 119. So I guess you could almost put that down to variance, but then we move over to Gears 5 and here's another game that showed some massive differences in previous tests. And here's where we saw actually quite a big difference with 193 average FPS versus 174. So there is still some gains to be had. If you are on Ryzen 5000, there's still some big gains to be had by just sticking on trusty Windows 10. Now, moving over to the Ryzen 5 3600, here's where we saw another big gap too, 122 average FPS versus 111. Now, on all the benchmarks where Windows 10 is winning, you'll also notice that the minimums in the case of Cyberpunk and the 5% lows, because we're just using those inbuilt benchmarks for these tests, they're also higher across the board on Windows 10. Now, here's where I decided to, okay, we'll just stick to the X3D now because there are differences to be had, but you guys definitely wanted to check out Ryzen 5000 in particular. And these benchmarks do take a long time to do, especially when we've got to show the side-by-side -side footage for you guys to get really all that juicy information. And here's with Age of Mythology. This was one that really stuck out for me because it's one of the latest games to be released. It's a very popular game sort of independently outside of all the fluff. This game had a big following back in the day and they've done a great job on the remaster. But of course this game, it can push both not just GPU, but also CPUs. And in this case, we see a very different push here with 129 average FPS versus 117. But you notice those 0.1% lows, they kept making huge hiccups on Windows 11. And so this was a general trend I've found with Windows 11 just being 
less reliable in terms of giving you a smooth experience than Windows 10. And that's probably the biggest takeaway from me with an X3D chip in particular, and not just on this game, but also a few other games did get some lower 0.1% lows here. So big difference there to be had in terms of stuttering, but also the average FPS was a big boost too. The move on to Baldur's Gate 3, this was the one game out of six that really didn't produce any big differences here. So nothing much to see here. Though on to Harry Potter, here is where we've got 105 average FPS versus 98, as well as a higher 0.1% low on that 5700X3D. So if you feel like playing uh, Hogwarts Legacy, sorry, I just call it Harry Potter sometimes, just <laughs> that's, and when I think of all that stuff, uh, this is the game that is going to give you better FPS on Windows 10. Then we're onto the last title here, Far Cry 6. And this is definitely known to be much more single thread dependent than the other titles that we've tested here. And here is where we see Windows 10 coming out on top with a slight victory. So 204 versus 197 average FPS. Now also I decided to quickly test Cinebench in this scenario. And here's where we got virtually the same results. So you could probably run this benchmark 20 times if you wanted to, and you could probably say one was edging out the other, but I just run it quickly just a couple of times and then I get the best result. And I show that to you guys like we're doing here. Anyway, with all that out of the way, it's time to talk about the CPUs in question here, as well as Windows 10 and Windows 11. What should you do? And from my testing, I'm finding that as we go back through the SKU stack here, that's we go back through Ryzen 5000, we go back through Ryzen 3000, we're just seeing on all Ryzen chips across the field, Windows 10 is performing better than Windows 11. And it might just be by a little bit, but it might be by a lot in some cases, especially the more we go with the high performance CPUs. So the 5700X3D did show some solid differences here. The 5800X3D just clocked a little bit higher will show even bigger differences. And so that's the results I wanted to check for here today for you guys. And I hope you definitely enjoyed me checking this out just to say, hey, if you're looking for a more reliable OS, especially if you're on a Ryzen CPU, then that is going to be had on Windows 10 versus Windows 11. Now, some of you guys in the comments are also talking about getting the LTSC IoT version, which I'm definitely gonna check out for me personally because I just don't see Windows 11 getting a whole lot better. I see this direction where over the years, and this is a few problems that we're gonna talk about here in the next few minutes. Uh, I see over the years, Windows 11 it, in itself has gotten worse. They're throwing in ads now. It just feels like the OS has become more sluggish. And so I think that's a contributing factor to why we're seeing less FPS or a more pronounced difference than we were when we were testing a few years ago. Now, on top of that, we've also got over the years, RTX 4090s coming out. And that's a huge performance boost when it comes to um, looking at maximum FPS versus say an RTX uh, 3090 even, or before that, an RTX 2080 Ti. And so those differences are going to be more pronounced with that higher end gear. And that's not just on the GPUs. We've also seen things like the Ryzen 5800X3D come out and then also the 7800X3D. And so we mash the higher end CPUs, the higher end GPUs, coupled in with the ever so increasing amount of bloat that's coming into Windows 11, we can just see the differences become much more stacked in favor of Windows 10. And that's what my testing has showed now across three different videos. And then we also, after that, we're still going to test out some power profile settings, which we've got some really interesting results for you guys. I know you're gonna like that video. And then we've also still got to review the 9950X for, for AMD because they sent that one over and they wanted us to check it out. And actually, I'm very curious to see how much uh, improvement that has for productivity over say the 7950X. The final question people are going to ask is, why don't you try Linux? At the moment, guys, I, <laughs> I've always been meaning to give Linux a proper workout. I just have to probably spend a couple of weeks researching Linux and how I would, uh, guess, change over. Because if I wanted to change my main OS from Windows 10 to Linux, I'd then have to look at, okay, what do I do for video editing? Uh, how do I get the same workflow that I'm able to do on Windows 10? into Linux. And so I think what we'll start off with with, with Linux is perhaps just benchmarking 
a heap of games versus Windows 10 and Windows 11. And maybe we'll just do that on the 9700X to start off with because that was the CPU that definitely was the shining star in terms of showing how bad Windows 11 got in terms of the performance degradation. And so if we start off there and perhaps you guys can recommend some games that are best optimized for Linux, then that would be greatly appreciated. And so I do wanna start testing out more things for you guys getting to the bottom of it because you guys have certainly been responding in the comments as well as hitting the like button and letting us know that you enjoy these benchmarks and this information. So thank you very much for that. And with all that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you have any questions or comments, as always, be sure to drop them down below. With that aside, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.